So welcome everyone. Uh, we are going to talk about the five product management buckets. So I am Rahul and I'm a senior product manager in Zoho Corporation. So first of all, uh, I'd like to thank NASCOM and Meety Startup Hub in association with our Zoho Corporation to give us an opportunity to share our experiences to the world. This is one of its kind and I'm very glad, proud and honored to be a part of this initiative. So yeah, so let's dive into this. First, uh, let me take you to the agenda for this meeting because it's always better to start with why. So this session, I'm gonna first tell you why this session. So for any, any businesses, any products who has a product management process in place, or who has a SDLC, a software development cycle in place, there is a product person who's working in the back end. So for anybody out there, not just for the product managers, but for any product person, there is a process in place. But the problem or the fact is, the process is not optimized for the work that we do. So I'm here to show you a couple of models and, uh, and additional suggestions that I can, I myself use for Zoho Desk in our own product. And that's the why for this agenda, for this session. So to start off, First, we'll look into the product management myths and facts, because there is a lot of myths about product management uh, and product managers and product management. So I'd like to talk a few things about product management myths and facts. And next off, we'll see the new golden circle. So I'm, I'm sure most of you must have heard about the golden circle. And we'll see about the new golden circle. And uh, the next thing, we are going to see what are the trades, what are the skills that a Gen Z product manager should possess. So that's something that we'll take a look into as well. So as I said, always start with the why. That's where the purpose is. But once you are aware of the why, you have to handle how you can proceed with that. For that, the next component, or the next thing that we are going to take a look is the planning of the GIST planning is called goals, ideas, steps, and tasks planning. So we'll take a look into the GIST planning of who's gonna do that. But Because when you have a work, there has to be someone to do that. So product person, a product manager should have a control or should have an understanding of who's gonna do that. That's very important in this product management process space. So next up is the time boxing. Because when we know why we are doing this, and when we know who's going to do that, the next important thing is when it's going to be completed or when, when it's going to start. It's, it's very important for us or for any product person to know what's the time this work is going to take. So that's something that we're going to take a look into. And at last, the important thing is the five buckets model. So that's the core perspective of this pitch, this session of how we are going to do this. So I'll show you uh, the five buckets model. Along with that, I'll also share how we, within Zoho Desk, uh, cater the same with our own tools. All right, so let's get started. The first thing, as I said, yeah, the product management, once the product management uh, slides are done, probably we can have a Q&A session, and we should be able to uh, complete the session by 5 o'clock. And as you could see, uh, this is the time box that I have for this session. So if I'm going in a slower pace, probably I, I, should, I should slow down a bit. Or if I'm moving a bit fast, this time box is going to help me to cut down things and make ensure that I complete this presentation in a precise on time factor. So this is a time box for my own presentation here. So let's see how it goes. All right. First thing the product management myths and facts. So it's four, five. I think we are on time. <laughs> All right. Uh, and myths, when we talk about product management myths, uh, there's a lot of myths about product management because that's something that I can remember from my own experiences. My managers used to tell me that product management is a myth. Product management itself is a myth. Yes, it is because myths are opinions, but there are also facts behind the myths, which we can take the myths, myths of the learning to understand what it is and 
also to understand what is the exact fact behind this. So a few say product management, they are the product owners. A few of them uh, say that product managers are the CEO of the product or they're the mini CEOs of the product. They're the boss of the product and they are the ultimate decision makers. And this is something interesting. So uh, there's always a myth saying that product managers are techie uh, because um, they, they should possess a technical degree. This is, this is one of the myths I used to uh, hear a lot. And uh, they are the one who generate the idea. That's also a myth about the product management. And uh, a few, uh, in a different manner, uh, a few of them have a perspective as product managers only creates the use cases. They just draft the use cases. That's one of the myths that I've heard about. And uh, product managers should possess a lot of uh, soft skills. That's something, yeah, I used to hear a lot about that as well. And they are the vision holder and they do exactly what the customer wants. And they always interact with the development team or the design team. And at times they never uh, care about the process. And uh, this is something that I want to emphasize on. This is a general um, talk, or I should say, as a general opinion that product management is same at every company. That's not the case, but that's that's a fact. That's that's the fact is it's different for different companies. But yeah, this is one of the myths that I'm seeing. Yeah, that's something interesting. Product managers cannot be straight out of the college. They should be from top management, business management schools. That's one of the uh, myths that have been uh, experiencing, and it's easy. Product management is easy. So that's that's something. Uh, this is the whole chunk of myths that I've been uh, listening to. But the facts, the other side of it, it's all about the responsibility. So who will be you? Be a product manager, someone from the school who's looking up to uh, become a product manager or who, a different stream, a, a developer or a designer who want to be a product manager. The first thing is uh, taking the responsibility. That's why I stress on the product person. Be a product person. So even product managers can think themselves as a product person with a CEO mindset. So not necessarily a product manager has to be a CEO, but they can have the CEO mindset of uh, having the vision towards the product. So use cases, drafting use cases are just the half the work. It's, it's not complete with just the use cases. That's not the way. So there's more to it. And from a lot of stats, it's very evident that only 5% of product managers have the tech background. That's, that's from different surveys. And so it's not about the degree. Degree It's about the degree of ownership that you put in. And that's that's when you, you be a product manager yourself. And don't be a leader. So just be a product manager or a manager who manages the work, not the people, not the team. And this is very important. Product managers are learners. So they are not techie. Of course, they are learners. It's a constant learning process. So that's something they want to stress. These are a few facts. Uh, from my own experiences. And uh, it's not about the decision. Product managers not just involve the decision. The discussion matters a lot. So that's when we can arrive into a, a conclusion, or that's when, when we can arrive into a better decision. And of course, product managers follow micro goals. And as I said, different product companies, different businesses have their own product process. And of course, they have to work uh, with cross-functional team, not just with the development team, not just with the UA team. So they have to work with cross-functional teams and they have to put themselves into the customer shoes to understand what the customer needs. That's very important because that has to be... So they they don't devise the vision, but they work for the vision. When product managers have an understanding of the product's vision, they work for the mission. And of course, uh, they try to implement, they don't just create the idea, they want to they want to be a part of the implementation itself, and it's not so easy. So that's that's how the product management myths and facts goes about. And I'd like to understand, before getting to the next slide, so I'd like to understand if uh, uh, your organization or your business have an optimized process, uh, product management process in place. So that's that's you can just type in the chat with your comments, or you can just uh, hint with the yes or no, just to share your opinion. But from the stats, from the survey, so it's evident that only about half of the companies have a consistent product management process. 
And this is very different from a 280 group survey. And the reason, of course, even, even with this uh, half of the companies, it's, it's evident that only 60% of organizations who, are, who have a process in place try to improve it, to try to optimize it. That's one another factor. And almost 37.9% of product managers say that their backlog is a mess. So that's something, that's something alarming because product managers always say that they have a backlog which they aren't able to manage with. So that's one of the reasons one in five products being delivered fail to meet their customer demands. Because when they have a backlog and uh, when they don't have an optimized process, when we don't have an optimized process in place, we fail to deliver what our customer needs. That, that's evident from the stats. And altogether, this comes into the result part, which is the profit of the company. A fully optimized product manager can increase the company profits by up to 34.2 percentage. So that's the reason that we have this session. And we're going to take a look into the model of how we can manage things and how we can get an optimized process for our own businesses, for our own companies and products. All right. So let me switch over to the next one. I think I'm a bit slower. So I think I should wrap it up. So on the time box, I have, I think I have. Uh, Exceeded four minutes, let's see. The next app is the golden circle. I'm sure everybody must be aware of the golden circle. And always start with the why. So that's that's the golden cycle, uh, circle proposal from Simon. And always start with the why. Know the purpose. As I said, the first thing that you have to do when you start a work is to know the purpose of it. Start with the why. But the real challenge is how you do it. The real challenge is what is the process in place to do that why? And when you have an optimized process in place, the next step, you will realize the proof of it. That's the what part. You'll see the proof of it. So start with the why, understand the how, and you'll see the results. So know the purpose first, have a process in place, and see the proof. So that's the golden circle proposal from Simon. But here, uh, I am adding a couple of other pointers just to make it a much a more optimized process. That is called as the new golden circle. Here, the how part, we want to categorize, further categorize that into a couple of other options of who does it. Who is the resource who's going to do that? So who is an additional entity to the how part? And the next immediate thing that we want to add is when. As I said, time is very important when we uh, when we do the work, when anybody uh, does the work. So time factor is very important. And it is also aligned a, as a part of the how. And only then we can arrive on the how part in a much optimized way. So the how part is categorized into who and when as an addi additional entity. And soon after that, as we saw, we'll arrive onto the what part what we want to do or what's going to be the result of it. So we'll see the result when we have a perfect process in place. Now let me move on to the next thing. All right, so I think I'm on time. So uh, we are in the Gen Z product manager slide. So any product manager who does a work for their product for a SaaS product or for any businesses uh, who try to evolve ideas and features for this generation, we can term ourselves as Gen Z product managers. And uh, it, it's, not about, it's not about the skills. It's not about the traits of a product manager who, uh, which keeps them uh, intact with the industry and market needs. It's, it's, it's about the understanding of the future as well. So of course, we are building something for today, but have a mindset for tomorrow as well. So that's something that I want to add. And the first mantra for a Gen Z product manager is know the why. As we've been seeing through the deck, know the why. That's the first mantra for a product manager. And as I said, it's, it's, it's the 
purpose of what we are doing, why we are doing, and not the result. The result is a profit. So when you know the why, when you know the purpose of why you are doing it, you get to understand the actual uh, reason that you're building something. Because we are doing our product managers in an SDLC does something for the product, ultimately for the customers. So there has to be a value add for the customers through the product. So first of all, know the why, understand the purpose of why you're doing it. Ultimately, any product manager can add value to the customer through the product. And for that, of course, product managers should possess different skills, different traits. Uh, probably I will make it easier for anybody here to understand what a product management uh, skill um, skills are or what a product manager should possess as a basic skill. So I usually put it into three buckets, uh, three uh, sections. The first is the tactical skill that a product manager should possess because that is a basic, that is a core a requirement so where product managers have to capture the requirements and use cases because that's the baseline when you do something you have to understand why you you're doing and what you're doing so that's one of the base case and you have a uh, product manager should have a control of the product backlogs and they should evolve new ideas and feature enhancements for the product and of course they have to develop a lot of hard skills like design thinking ui ux thinking Tech, uh, tech skills, which is required for this. So these are listed as tactical skills. So first and foremost, I would suggest any Gen Z product manager to focus on the tactical skills. And the second foremost thing is the leadership skills, where each product manager can evolve themselves to be much more communicative, because collaboration is uh, something very important for a product manager, for a product person. So uh, the leadership skills part, create a vision for the product, then make that as a different roadmap for each year or different quarters, then have a dedicated deadline, give it to the team, communicate to the same to the team and manage the workplace silos. Because when you, product managers are someone who connect the dots between the teams. So and most importantly, take the ownership and responsibility. As we've seen, product managers, be it a win or a loss, because there is no loss here, it's all about learning, so be it something, you fail to deliver, take it as a responsibility, take the ownership of that and try to improve from that. So that leadership skill is one of the skills that a product manager should possess. And of course, the strategic skills, which take a decision and either stand by white or black. Usually uh, at times we have to maintain a gray tone, but it's always better to be on either on the white side or a black side, yes or no kind of one or zero. So decision-making is a key skill of a product manager. So try to brainstorm things, try to understand the constraints, the technical baggages and uh, customer demands and try to put a balance of all these and then take a decision. And the next step is I would suggest product managers have to be outcome focused because output is a number outcome is what we get out of it. So of course there has to be a control on the output, but the focus has to be on the outcome. So that's something that I'd like to suggest for any product managers. And of course be product centric, that's the key part. Now let's move on to the next stop. All right, so I think we are on time, probably one minute. The next thing that we're gonna say is the gist planning, as I said, when we know the purpose, the immediate thing is to communicate and collaborate with the team and to get the work done. So first of all, there are different processes. Any, any businesses, any products will have their own process in place. But the best that I've been uh, working on, uh, I, we ourselves in Do Zoho Desk work based on this. So it's about the gist planning. It's all about having a goal, put that goal into different ideas then make their ideas into different steps and that steps is then again separated as different tasks. So here's another mantra for the product managers. So know the who, because ultimately that's gonna end in the tasks frame where we have to assign 
tasks to different team members or we ourselves have to do that task for ourselves. So only then we'll, we can move to the next step, the logical step. Then once the step or all these steps are completed, we ensure that that idea is completed. When the idea is completed, we achieve the goal. So just planning is a very basic uh, planning structure that every teams here, every businesses here can follow. So put a goal, separate that into ideas, take different logical steps to achieve that idea. And of course, assign the tasks. And so knowing the how, I mean, knowing the who helps you to be in control of who's doing it, who can do that. Because that gives a control of the resource allocation and also that reduces the management overhead. And most importantly, that increases the speed of the work convergence. Because that's something that's very important for any product management process because we can devise a big goal and we can easily split that goal into ideas and steps. And of course, we are going to break that into different tasks. But the key is when, when we know who's going to do it and when we have a control of how this is going to be completed, there's going to be a speed of work convergence. That ultimately helps you to improve on the customer demands part, as well as that helps any teams to work on the backlog part. So as I said, just planning is a basic model that any teams can uh, start, uh, start following, I should say. Whatever be the tool that you have, you start with that. A, a few might be, we, we internally, we use Zoho Desk and Zoho Projects for our own planning. But I would recommend any teams, any businesses who have a process in place to optimize their process by having the just planning in place. So even you can uh, write it down like a notepad or something, or you can just put it a sticky note, have a goal, can be a micro goal, can be a macro goal, just split that goal into different ideas. Ideas are just execution parts. And the execution parts further break into steps. Either you're going to assign it to a lead, or you're going to assign that work to a stream, like a marketing step or a customer step, which will attain to that goal. So that is something very important. And from there, try to add the tasks relatively. So that helps the team to assign the tasks by assigning the task, the task owner completes it. Then we ultimately close the step. The step is completed. Once the step is done, ideas are achieved. When the ideas are achieved, we attain the goal. So yeah. So now let's move on to the next step. All right. So we are on time. And the most important thing, or I should say, one of the key things of handling the work is to have a control on when, have a control on the time factor. So as you can see, even we are running a time box for this own slide to just to have a track of where are we with the time. And this helps anybody who does anything to be in control of what we do. So time boxing is something that we can create for any tasks that we do, not necessarily a timeline or a customer commitment time or it's not a commitment externally, but it's an internal commitment. So time box is not, it's all about having a time factor for your own works. And typically by definition, time box is the period for uh, that a person or team takes to complete their goal, a micro or a macro goal, be it a smaller one or a bigger one. So that's another mantra for the product managers. That is know the when, as I said, not necessarily it has to be an external factor. Uh, it's not about a commitment that you're given to the customer or, or a partner or a stakeholder. It's about an internal commitment. So we'll take a typical example here. So if you could see here, this is a typical example of an eight weeks work item of an SDLC where uh, the software development cycle has its own phases, like initiating the process, doing it, completing it, and giving it to the customers. So if we take that cycle, uh, I have taken this cycle for uh, eight weeks of time frame and try to put in each of the factors of the SDLC in different boxes and you time box that. In this case, if you could see, 
we have a time box for the research and brainstorming. That's two weeks. And uh, we have an immediate time box for the meeting and approval. Because we can take time to do the research and the brainstorming. But once we are done with that, uh, it, it's, it's, ways, uh, it, it's better to immediately call for a meeting and uh, involve all the DRIs. Uh, we call this affinity meeting, affinity grouping. Call for a meeting and do the brainstorming. Then get to know about the feedback from the team, from your peer product managers or from the developers, from the design team. Then get it approved immediately. So that's you can time box that as one week. And once you're done with that, the logical immediate step is to work on that. And that is possible only through, by iterating on it and converging the case to the fullest. So you take enough time so that you're giving up quality and output. That's very important. So this convergence part is, the, is going to take most of the time. But ensure that we understand why we are doing it and who's doing it when to do this we have a control of this put an internal timeline an internal commitment time box that take take the time but ensure that we deliver a quality output only then we'll get the outcome of what we need and once the iteration part is completed once you are done with that you just give it to the testing phase where it's just uh, uh, the testing team or the quality uh, engineers test it out and then you can launch it so have a time box for that as well. And very importantly, once your feature, once your product, or once your application is launched, it's not completed. The task is not completed. It's only completed when we assess and improve things, when you track, monitor things, and make improvements there. So that's very important. So add that to your time box factors as well. And that will help any, any product managers who, who have an, who's a part of an SDLC or not just for product managers, any product person who's a part of the product management cycle to have a dedicated time box for their own works. Rahul, right. just a question. Yes, thank you. So, so in your role as a product manager, so where have you used time box and what is the benefit that you have actually seen? Okay, that's a good question, Shanky. And uh, we are internally, as I said, we internally use uh, our own tool, Zoho Desk. And uh, we set timelines through due dates. We call it as uh, stage-based timelines. But uh, the, Im the important thing is we get notifications. If you are going to breach that time, we get the notifications saying that this is, this is a due for this work item. As I said, this is not about committing to it, but it's about having an understanding of where it's going. Are we deviating from the timelines? Are we deviating from the factors? So for me, personally, this has helped a lot to have a track, have a control of where are we with respect to these work items. So our tools. Compared help. to time box, how would you uh, see gang charts? So would that also be a way of trying to ensure that the product management process stays on track? Have you used that as well, please? Yes, 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 we do, Ashanti. We have a Gantt chart. And in fact, uh, this is this time box, this timeline is derived from the Gantt chart. The only uh, the difference is uh, Gantt chart is a typical process that you, that's an underlying process for any process. When it comes to time box, you can have your own internal timelines. Uh, if if there is a deadline for you, like eight weeks, and if it needs additional two weeks of time for you, you can do that. Uh, you can add that as an input during the meeting and approval process itself. And you can improve, uh, you can increase the time box time. The When you do that, you have control of, because as I said, uh, we focus on the quality and not on the numbers, not, not on the time factors. So Gantt chart is very uh, relevant or equivalent of the time box. It's just that uh, Gantt chart, probably I should say the top deck and time, bo time box is beneath that, where individuals can have control of their own work thank you all right does that answer thank you all right so now uh, we are moving yeah. on to the okay. please proceed thank you thanks thanks thank you. all right so now we are going to take a look into the buckets model so as as this is the core of this session because as i said always start with why and but the challenge is the how part and for that challenge, as we already seen, 
who and when is always going to help. When you know who's going to do and what's going to be the time factor, you should be able to handle the how in a better way. So for that, this five buckets model will be of helpful for any product managers. So let's dive into the, those different buckets and see how we can group the work in each of the buckets. So know the how, but most importantly, know how to manage that how. That's through this five bu uh, buckets model process. The first off, the first bucket that I should say is the works that are in the pipeline. You have a bucket, you, you put all the work items, You because any product is uh, driven through a roadmap, through a vision. So you should have a pipeline, you should have a roadmap, and uh, uh, the roadmap and the vision has to be uh, has has to be in sync. So ensure that is aligned. Uh, that's something that's the first bucket, very important bucket, where you put all the work items. And the second bucket is the work in progress. Whatever work that you currently do, you put all that work in the work in process bu uh, bucket. That's where you focus. You you focus on a daily basis. And of course, all these work items. That are current that we are currently doing moves into the next bucket, which is the work completed bucket. And from the completed part, you take a set of works and you put in the bucket where you want to track those works. That's the immediate, the next immediate bucket. That's the track completed bucket. And the last one, as I said, completion is just halfway, but uh, when you track, when you monitor, you try to achieve your goal. So you also have to have a control of uh, what are the works, what are the works that you completed uh, uh, has achieved the goal. You want to keep track of that. So only then we can come back to the cycle once again. So if if there is a goal achieved, if it's not, you just put back, put that work item back to the pipeline bucket or in the work in progress bucket. So that's how this bucket model is going to help you. So let's let's take a deep deep dive into each of these individual buckets to understand what are the works that you can put in. The first one, as, as I said, the first bucket is the work in pipeline bucket. So any product will have its own vision. Any product will have its own roadmap. But the fact, but the a key point is, is our roadmap aligned with the vision? Is our set of features aligned with the roadmap? Is the individual work items are aligned with the roadmap as well as the vision? That's very important as a baseline. So the first and foremost bucket, but that any product management process or any product managers or any any businesses uh, is to create this bucket and put your roadmap items there. It could be a, a future item, or it could be a new idea, or it could be a backlog because that's something product managers have to um, work out on a daily basis. It could be a new feature request from uh, customers or from partners or it could be a market demand because we have to be on par with the market and industry, or it could be a requirement from the customer. So all these work items are, or has to be a part of this first bucket. And uh, so that's the first one. So you, you can put all these work items uh, and uh, have, a key, have a track of when to move these work items to the next bucket. So the next one is the work in progress bucket. So then, uh, as I said, Anything, any work that we do on a daily basis is into this bucket, where either it can be a use case analysis or it could be a work that is under designing phase or a, a feature that's under testing or development, or it's an issue or a bug that uh, a company has to fix, or it could be an immediate priority so that from a partner or a, pers a prospect or from a customer, a work item moves from the first bucket to the next one. And this could be the next immediate bucket where you can keep track of it. And when the work is completed, it moves on to the next one, the third bucket, which is the work completed bucket. So here, any work that you do, be it a bug fix or be it an enhancement or be it a work item um, from your current work item, moves into, the, uh, moves into this work completed bucket. So it can also be a beta program. Do you want to run some tests? Uh, you want to run a feature uh, through a closed group of users, you can complete that work and you can put into this bucket. Or if it's a work item which needs a second phase of enhancement, 
we can put those work items into this bucket or it could be a small ua ux change uh, or an enhancement that can increase the user experience to a greater extent so when it's completed just put those work items in this bucket but the key part is as i said work completed is not the goal not the result to achieve that result all the work items that gets added that gets accumulated in this work completed state has to go through the next bucket which is the track completed bucket so when a work is completed the next immediate thing is to track it to monitor it you can have your own stats you can have your own metrics you can have your own benchmarks so it could be a, a feature that you want to monitor to improve improve or it could be a mobile application that you just launched where you want to understand the usage of it or it could be uh, an extension or, or it could be a app that you want to uh, hear back from your customers like a rating or review or it could be a feature that you recently added to your product but you want your customers to give their feedback or it could be a feature that you just added as a beta program but you want to understand the scalability and usability of it so anything that gets completed moves on to this fourth bucket that is the track completed bucket and of course when we track and uh, when we monitor things we tend to know that if we have achieved the goal that's very important so if it's it has achieved the vision if the feature the the app or the extension has met the roi so you have your own benchmarks you have your own indicators and based on that you can validate if the goal is met you can have those work items in this bucket just to ensure that what you have done right so that you have achieved the goal so these are the five buckets of the product management and typically this is an example of how the work gets split between these buckets as you could see the first phase is 100% is the work item of a product i should say as i said based on the vision you have a road map based on the road map you have the features features are split into tasks so let's say if there is 100 tasks uh, you have 35% of that task in a pipeline and the next half into the next bucket and almost you achieve 90% of the closure there so anytime you ensure that you have three items in your bucket so when a work item moves from one bucket to the another bucket you can have another item added to the first one so it's, it's kind of you start from the low numbers and you can just achieve the bigger ones on the later part so yeah so the first three buckets that is going to focus on the work item flow from work in pipeline from roadmap to the progress bucket and from progress bucket to the completed stage from the completed stage uh, not necessarily all work items have to be tracked you can have the key items to be tracked to be monitored and you can have key items with a set of benchmarks and metrics and indicators so you can value your own feature convergence to see if you, uh, you have reached the goal if you have met the results and as i said we internally use our own product zoho desk to uh, capture these buckets so this is a, just an example as you could see these are sample data in the work in pipeline and work in progress bucket but the work completed track completed and goal achieved is from the real time data as you, i should say it's live and this is our own tool that we use for managing the buckets but not necessarily you have to use any kind of any any specific tools you can use your own uh, style you can use your own uh, tool it can be a just a, a, a note notepad or a sticky note where you can have all the work items listed in each of the buckets or it could be a project management tool or it could be uh, you can be use a different tool to manage your work but ensure that you have all these buckets in place and put the uh, work items in each of the buckets appropriately and you move things from one bucket to the other all right and uh, i think i have saved a lot of time and the actual presentation is planned for one hour but i thought i'll just finish it off with 45 minutes and give you 10 minutes of time for the questions and it's kind of uh, we are in the session summary slide now so we have seen the product management myths and facts and uh, we have seen the new golden cycle uh, as i said why is the key 
but how is the real challenge to make uh, make it to the what? So you should have a control of uh, the why, how, and what. To have a control on the how part, we've seen the new golden circle where we have added who and when to that. And of course, uh, we, we also saw what are the skills of a product managers, uh, a Gen Z product manager should possess. And uh, we saw the gist planning. Uh, we went through the time boxing features. And also, we, we saw the buckets model. And uh, I explained how we are using the buckets model within Zoho Desk to manage our own works. And here we are in the last slide. And I would like to understand if there is uh, a take, any takeaway from this session, because that's the goal for this session for me. I have to understand if I have delivered on what you've been expecting. So this is this is kind of I just want to track my own metrics out of it and to see if we have achieved the goal for this session for this webinar. So yeah, so thanks a lot, thanks a lot for giving me an opportunity on this. And I've saved uh, at least ten minutes of this time, which is close to if if there if there are hundred attendees here, I think I have saved two days of your time. <laughs> 